Hello, and welcome to the Brannigan Communications Podcast. It is episode 12. This week, I'm your host, Nick Kudris. I'm the digital strategist here at Brannigan. Today, I'm joined by uh, our senior account executive, Emma Wallow, and our CEO and founder, Tom Brannigan. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Thank you. Great. Looking forward to it. How are you guys doing today? Very well. Sun shining. Absolutely. <laughs> it just came All you out. can ask for. It was a bit... Um, Rainy. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit rainy this morning, but it's looking nice now. Nice. Um, so this week, we are talking about music and how it affects the workplace, how it can affect productivity. And I kind of wanted to get your guys' opinion because you have some music backgrounds. You're avid music lovers, music listeners, musicians. And, you know, it can help productivity. It can hurt productivity. It can help you unwind. So I just wanted to cover all our bases. Um, so let's jump right into it. First question I want to ask is, have you been listening to any new interesting music this week? The only song that comes to mind that I've been listening to recently was the latest Katy Perry song. But it's funny, I realized why I like it. I don't actually traditionally, I, I mean, I listen to her music, but she's not necessarily one of my go-to artists. But this particular song that she just released, I believe she uses or her band uses a marching snare drum instead of the traditional drum kit. And so the first time I heard it, I was just really drawn to that. So that's a song that I've been listening to just for that very specific reason. But it's more, it's like a very upbeat kind of pump up song. So very nice. Yeah. So honestly, for me, the band that I had never heard of before that a colleague turned me on to is a band called Greta Van Fleet. And okay. I like them and I've been listening oh. to them because I love classic rock and mm -hmm. they're evocative of that. They're kind of taking what Zeppelin and a lot of the big 70s arena bands did and they're kind of putting their own stamp on it and I've been really enjoying that. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, I, I see a lot of 70s influences in, in some modern bands now. Um, it's, it's a fantastic decade. Yeah, yeah. Um, great, that's really good. So, um, you know, obviously music is a huge part of your culture here and um, we play music every day and, you know, you can't come into this office without hearing a little tune or something playing on the speakers. So how did you come to that decision in, in your work workplace? Well, it's actually, I think it's an interesting backstory because a couple years ago we didn't have it. That was like right when I started actually, so I was there for that little transition. So I'm a little older than most of the people who work here, so I grew up at a time where you really didn't do that in the office place and there was a lot of just organic talking and especially at agencies, people, you know, sharing ideas and, and all that. And at one point a couple years ago, I started to really notice that Brannigan's office was very quiet. And I didn't like it. Like, my initial reaction was, why is it so quiet? There must be a problem. Well, of course, upon investigating, I see earbuds in everybody's mm -hmm. ears, and they were all kind of listening to their own thing. And I didn't like that at first because I didn't grow up, so to speak, in an office environment like that. But then I realized, hey, that's what you know people are doing these days, and that's fine. And then it kind of morphed to, regardless of whether or not people had earbuds in, let's put some ambient music on, just because I like something ambient. And then I think we kind of evolved to everybody kind of takes turns picking playlists and playing mm -hmm. what they like. And putting together our own BC playlists on Spotify, which is fun. That's I remember right. I think we actually had a staff meeting to discuss like, oh, what should we do music wise here? And that was cool because in any other job that I've had, it's always just been everybody listens to their own individual music and does their own thing. But now we kind of collectively share what we all like. I've discovered right. a ton of new music that I love just from other people's tastes and other people putting together playlists. So As really have fun. I. And yeah. some days it's 80s, some days it's Broadway show tunes, the, and some days one. it's <laughs> yeah, the best one. Some days it's Katy Perry stuff. And every once in a while they throw me a bone and they'll put some 70s or some classic rock on. Yeah, I love the I love the, the variety we have here, and I definitely like learn about new artists when I come in the office. And um, certainly, I, I have a, a love for some classic rock um, music, so you know, being able to hear that too is awesome. Mm -hmm. So you talked about people wearing earphones or earbuds or whatever they you know right. have right now. Um, do you think that can um, help workers who maybe get distracted by you know their environment um, while they're working? I think so, and I think some people are kind of, if you excuse the term, wired for that, and some aren't. I get distracted if I have a lot of loud music on around mm -hmm. me. That's why I like the ambient kind of backgroundy stuff. But some people really like it. There's actually, and you probably know this, but there's actually been quite a lot of research done on this in terms of workplace performance and music and 
from a biological perspective, the brain releases dopamine. If you're listening to something that your brain likes, the, re the reward center of the brain re releases dopamine. It makes mm -hmm. you feel happy, all that. Um, I read a study years ago where they actually played songs like Walking on Sunshine and really like poppy, fun, melodious songs like that, and then played some really heavy metal songs to see how that Im impacted productivity. So there, there's, there's some science behind it. Uh, we haven't gone to that depth here. <laughs> it just kind of comes down to how do people like to work and kind of let them and encourage them to do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think for me personally, I actually love, like, if I'm writing something that really needs my full attention, I actually need, like, my headphones in so that I'm getting any conversations out of the way. Like, I'm not getting distracted by the other noises that are happening, but it's nice to then, you know, when I'm working on other projects, feel more connected to the office and the office culture, hearing what other people are talking about and being able to jump into different conversations and contribute ideas. And I feel like when I first started and I was constantly using my headphones all the time, I missed out on that and sure. those interactions. So it's been nice to have definitely the balance between the two. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so you said you put music on while you're writing, and um, you know, to, to Tom's point about studies, um, you know, certain types of music are, <clears throat> excuse me, better for um, different types of work. So writing is more linguistic. You're, you're you mm -hmm. know, trying to think your thoughts out and put it on paper. Do you listen to music with lyrics or songs you know, songs you don't know? I typically, that's actually something I was thinking about recently. I listen to songs that I know really, really well, like kind of like my old favorites and like my all my fallbacks, because then my mind isn't trying to learn the lyrics, because I will probably talk about this a little bit later, like I love to sing, and so when I listen to music, I listen to like learn how to sing along to it, and so if I'm listening to something new, it can be distracting to me, so I will put on, you know, playlists that I've listened to for years, and it just still keeps me invested in the writing, but it's not pulling me away from it in any capacity, so... What about you, Tom? What do you like to listen to? Newer, new, new music that you know, or new music you don't know, new music you know? Typically at work, I'm not listening to music on headphones, uh, unless I'm cleaning out email, cleaning my office, that kind of thing. And in that kind of situation, I'll put on Zeppelin, I'll put on The Who, I'll put on uh, you know that stuff that I love that I kind of grew up with. Uh, REM, I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a product of the 80s, so I love that kind of stuff too. Uh, but typically, yeah, I'm not listening to music directly. Like, whatever's ambient out there, I'll take. Yeah. But I'm definitely with Emma on the distraction. So because I play, I play a little bit, I don't, I kind of intuitively go to trying to hear the bass part mm -hmm. or hear the guitar part, and that distracts me from work. So it has to be something either I don't really need a lot of intellectual, you know, I'm cleaning out email, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. or something I'm super familiar with so I don't find my, my brain wandering. Because I do that without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I definitely, because I also play, I think all of us play some sort of instrument. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely, uh, I'll either listen to something that I do know really well, and then, you know, I, I do find myself, like, noodling along or thinking, like, oh, that's a really cool mm -hmm. part, I should learn that, or, you know, things like that. So other times I'll listen to just, like, ambient music. It's just very, like, no lyrics, very calm, like, trying to hone in on that focus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we live in an age today where the radio isn't what it was when I was growing up. When I was growing up, you put on the radio, and that's where you heard new stuff. Mm -hmm. And I love satellite radio. I love the garage station. I love the 70s and the deep track stations, that kind of thing. But I find as I get older, a lot of times where I hear new music is if I'm watching a movie on the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my, my family and I we were watching this movie called The Upside, I don't I know if you've seen that. this. Kevin Hart's in a Nicole Kidman. Oh, yeah, 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 I did, yeah. yeah. Brian yeah. Cranston, I think. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. a newer one. And there's this scene where there, there's a party scene in it, and there's this song playing that sounded a lot like, a lot like James Brown, and it was really a good song. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, I waited to the credits, and actually it's a Bruno Mars song that uh, I never heard of, so yeah. that's a song I'll go check out I love out that, now. Yeah, yeah. Like I do the same thing when I'm watching TV shows. Like You just hear it as like the transitional music. You're like, oh, I want to listen to that one. Seek it out. Or something like that, yeah. Yeah, great. So, you know, another thing that people tend to listen to, not necessarily music, but it's an auditory thing, is a podcast. Um, so do you find that there are podcasts that, um, do, you, do you like to listen to them while you work? Are they distracting? Do they help you grow professionally? Like, what are the ups and downs of that? So I'm a little late to the podcast game, but I've just started listening to a few that my brother has recommended because he's listened to podcasts for years. There's a few that my sister has found that she's passed along. And I, I really like them. I've found that like, 
and this is a very recent thing for me, like what I need to do is like dedicate time to where I'm listening to podcasts. Mm. I, that's not something that I've tried actually yet to listen to while I've been working just because I feel like the, the content of the podcast I'm listening to are, I want to devote more of my attention to them than I'm able to right. when I'm working on things. Like I, I listen to this podcast, it's called On Purpose by Jay Shetty, who was actually this guy who took time away from his life to just go be a monk and then came back and now talks about all these like really big concepts about life and it's just like a lot of really good motivational life information. He has really interesting interviews with different guests on his show and that's something that I find that if I'm even at home listening to that, doing something different, I'll like go back over to my phone and rewind a couple minutes because I'm like, oh, I wasn't fully paying attention while I was washing the dishes or something. Yeah, so I, do that too. I have to pay attention a little bit more to those just because I want to make sure that I'm digesting the content and then actually thinking about it. Whereas music, sometimes I can let that more just wash over me while I'm doing other things and it's not as like active of listening for that type of thing. Yeah. This is a great question for my wife because she listens to many different podcasts. I'm very late to it. Uh, I, I wouldn't do it at work just for the same reasons of distraction, mm -hmm. but I've listened to a couple on drive time and for yeah. me that would be the time where I would listen to them, but I haven't like, I don't have any kind of favorites. Mm -hmm. Interesting. For me, it's basically, my wife will say, hey, check, check this out. out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Um, you brought your wife up. So I know Emma said that, you know, she kind of grew up in a very musical family um, and, um, you know, so what was that like? How did that influence your musical tastes and, and what what you do musically? Uh, yeah, so I can give a little bit of background on my family. I, it's, everyone in my family has been super involved in music as long as I can remember in just a very recreational sense in the, in the sense that we all love it. So my mom has been a singer for as long as I can remember. She sings at our church. Um, I grew up loving to sing. We all, I have four siblings or three siblings. Myself is the fourth. So we all took piano. I was on the uh, drumline in high school so it just it just kind of was this constant thread throughout all of our lives and I don't know it really it influenced I think particularly like the way that we like to interact with each other the way that we the way that we focus while we're doing things all these different things were influenced by music because it was just kind of a constant presence in our life like even I was back home this weekend I'll come home and there's music playing whether it's my dad loves Irish music mm -hmm. he also he Side note, he writes like film um, scores. Like, yeah. Or awesome. he, well, he actually writes screenplays. So oh. he just is very into the film industry. And so Got he's. It. He loves like Bollywood, so like Indian films. So like we'll come home and there's like Bollywood music playing, That's which awful. is so much fun. So it's it's not even just that it was like a constant in our life. I think it also opened kind of like this cultural door for us, where we got exposed to all these different styles of music and different you know just areas of the world through music. And so that was just a really cool kind of backdrop for my life growing up and it just definitely influenced like what I'm interested in today as far as music and culture and all these different things so it was cool to have that be such a big a big part of my life nice. but, mm -hmm. so a, a little similar my my both my parents uh, played my father played the piano from a very young age and is the greatest piano player I've ever heard in my life he's wow. You could say to my father, give me, I love you for sentimental reasons and B flat, give him the key and he'd just play it. Yeah. So cool. He'd just play it. Uh, and, and he passed away about eight years ago, but he had a profound influence on me, as, as did my mother. My mother, beautiful singing voice. She danced when she was younger. Uh, and so, and my sisters both play and sing. My, my sister Carrie inherited my father's piano talent and is just spectacular on the piano. My sister Mary plays guitar. They both sing beautifully. So I grew up with that. I was just surrounded by that. Of course, I went the rock and roll route. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was in seventh grade, I started playing the bass guitar and the guitar a little bit, and it kind of it kind of took off from there. But if you have time, I have a fun anecdote about my dad since you asked this question. So he he was asked to play. He played all over. So he played at events and it, it, mostly around the Oshkosh area where Oshkosh, Wisconsin area where I grew up. Mm -hmm. But the EAA, the Experimental Aircraft Association, has a fly-in, a global fly-in every year. And during that week or few days, Oshkosh, the Oshkosh airport becomes busier than O'Hare. I mean, it's really super busy. So my dad, who's about as humble a man as you can imagine, he calls me one night. And he's at this EAA event. And you know, I hear glasses clinking in the background. And it's very social. And he said, Tom, you're never, you're never going to guess. I've got a guy sitting next to me on the on the piano stool, um, you're never going to guess who this guy is. And I'm like, who is it? 
And he's like, I, I forgot. And he leans over. He's like, who are you? What, what was that movie you were in? And I'm, and I'm thinking, okay, who could this be? And I hear this very mumble response. Uh, my name's Harrison Ford. I was oh in a movie goodness. called Star Wars. Uh, and he's like singing torch songs. Oh, my gosh. Or like playing with, a, a, with Harrison Ford next That's to him. Incredible. Anyway, but that, that was my dad. I mean, he was just yeah. really... That's wonderful. But yeah, music is a huge, and, uh, and a lot of the songs that my parents introduced us to are songs from the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And my dad would always uh, it, it remind me that those songs, very emotional. Mm-hmm. Like I Love You for Sentimental Reasons is a very, it's a beautiful melody, beautiful mm-hmm. song. A lot of these songs that are considered classic today were written by people who were going through really tough times, like right. the Great Depression, Depression, and times in our country that were really difficult, but they brought mm-hmm. out the romance in people in a really profound way. So I think that that's mm-hmm. notable too. Totally. Now, so you have kids now. Do you feel like you're instilling, I heard your, your um, daughter and son are, are great musicians as well. So uh, Absolutely. do you think you're instilling that on them? <clears throat> My daughter Katie is a beautiful vocalist. She's been in plays and I, I pull out the guitar, we play songs, and we've threatened to put a set together and play a set somewhere. <laughs> and my family. Ex- oh, I mean, yeah, a little bit. Uh, and my son, Michael, is just an exceptional drummer. Mm. We have a little studio in our basement. Nice. He has a band. He has a high school band called Apple Pie, spelled P-Y-E. Amazing. And they play a lot of classic rock. They play Zeppelin. They play ELO. They play a little nice. U2. And, of course, a little bit of The Who, which is, I must say, the greatest rock band of this or any generation. Or any. <laughs> and there it is. Thank you for humoring me. <laughs> I'm excited to hear that you play music with your family and sing because I did not, until I, like, I got to college, I just thought that everybody like sang with their families. Like I thought that was just like what people do. And my friends were like, no, that's just you guys. Like My mom would always joke that our family was like the Von Trapps from The Sound of Music because like, we just all sing together, like just for fun. Like Somebody will start singing, we'll all join in because we know the same music or like it'll be a jingle from a Disney movie that we had watched when we were younger. But don't you, do you think that that bonded your family? 100%. I, I'll have friends over and we'll do that in front of them and they're, like, they're just amazed and it just showed, like it's become you know, inside jokes with us and yeah, it just, I think it really, those are things that have cemented us over the years, just that common familiarity with those different musical pieces and we, well and, and at Brandigan we've danced with the idea of putting something together a lot of us sing or in bands Jake a young man who mm-hmm. just left here who's an intern for a while he's a great singer Kathleen's a singer you're Ashley mm-hmm. sings she probably won't want me saying this but <laughs> so we've we've kind of you know toyed with the mm-hmm. idea of putting together something here but that That'd would be cool. super fun and I think it does bond you I mean there's something that music does that nothing else Absolutely. does mm-hmm. and yeah. you create memories the whole dopamine effect is yeah. part of it and it's just fun. I think it. I mean, I think you know we all have. You know, we all walk around. Everybody has a little bit of a barrier sometimes that they put up. Music breaks that down. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So yeah, a lot of us play here. Um, I I think we should get a little baby grand and put it in the corner somewhere. Love it. <laughs> Love it. So you know, music is really an important part of every step of my day. So in the morning, I'll listen to music while I'm walking here. I'll listen to it while I'm here. When I get home, I like to play, and I find. You know, if I've had a stressful day while I'm playing, it really calms me down. It helps me unwind, and it really, you know, centers me. Do you do you guys find that as well? Oh, hundred percent. I I feel like I'm listening to music most times while you know I'm awake. Like I'll put it on when I wake up in the morning, when I walk to and from the parking lot. Like it's just a nice addition to whatever else is going on. And I feel like if I need a break from something at work, I'll go take a walk. I'll listen to a little bit of music and. I don't know, I t- you know, I'll pick the genre based on how I'm feeling that day, and I typically know what'll put me in a better mood or what'll get me relaxed, and I just feel like that does really enhance my experience as a person. So I'm all in on the music front. For me, the two times that I really use it to unwind is on the way home from work, mm-hmm. especially on a Friday. Just crank it oh, up. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've heard of Ken Baker. Mm-hmm. But he's got some great stuff out there. Uh, anyway, so I've been listening to him a lot lately. And then when I go running, I have a playlist. And it usually starts with a mid-tempo, but then it gets into, you know, more rock and stuff. And Mm -hmm. there's just nothing like it. I absolutely love to do it. But those are the two times when I Mm -hmm. use a ton of wine. Do you guys belt out tunes in the car? Oh, 
constantly. Are you kidding? A hundred percent. Is that even a question? hundred <laughs> percent. I'm the guy at the red light who looks like he's having some kind of breakdown because I'm just like Guys, totally in it. Guys, I sing in, in Moon. Uh, people will come and they knock on the door. They're like, are you on a conference call? I'm like, no, I'm just singing. Like, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. All the conference rooms are named after who members. So that's, yes. you know, that's, that's another right. thing. That's right. Moon, after Keith Moon, we have Daltrey Townsend, and we have Ent Whistle. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Um, so I think that wraps up what I wanted to say. Do you guys have anything else you want to add? I have a question for each of you. Uh, is there a time in your life when you've been either struggling or really excited about something and there's just one song that comes to mind that you like to listen to. Like, what is your pick-me-up song or what is your I'm going to rock out song? What is your air drum song? What is, like, a song that is a go-to for you? That is really tough. I know. I will start. I'm so on the spot. <laughs> there's a band, and I believe that they are out of Chicago, called Material Issue. Okay. Fantastic power pop. Fantastic power pop band. Run, do not walk, and download their stuff. Mm-hmm. They have a song called Diane which is just a great song to air drum to and to sing to mm-hmm. and to rock out to. I'm not going to pick a single song, but if I, you know, I always feel like gangster rap is, <laughs> I don't know, it's really weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird. That's so funny. But, you know, if I'm feeling down or, you know, need to get pumped or um, I just put on gangster rap, I don't know why. <laughs> any artists, any particular artists? Um, 90s artists. I like, um, like NWA, you know, Compton just yeah. that movie came out a while mm-hmm. ago but um, more recently like Kendrick Lamar uh, I'm really a huge fan of what he does musically like he, you know it is gangster rap but there's a lot of musicality there he does like concepts and, mm-hmm. and there's like a lot of theming and um, it's really interesting to like put that stuff on and kind of dive into it and get, you know get everything you can out of it mm-hmm. so. I, I'll kind of take a similar route with that there are two bands that I kind of default to if I'm ever, you know, going through something or even just like want to relax or even these are the two bands that I typically put on, as I mentioned earlier, when I'm doing some writing that I, I'm just so familiar with their music and need to focus. There are two Christian bands, actually. It's Reliant K and Switchfoot. And I listened to them since I was in like fifth and sixth grade. I know like you could pretty much play any song by either of them and I'd know it within a couple seconds just because I've listened to it for so long and I just love their music because they I feel like they write their songs like poetry and as somebody who studied English and really just loves and appreciates the English language like I really just think they do a lot with their lyrics and it just it has I think also that nostalgic tie for me with just growing up and my family all listen to it as well and both are both are great bands and there's something to that there's something to this might sound a little snobbish but you know I grew up at a time where People didn't lip sync concerts and people didn't use auto tune yeah. mm-hmm. and people wrote their own songs. And mm-hmm. now if there's a confectionery kind of aspect of especially popular music that oh, yeah. I really don't care for. Mm-hmm. I really, I really don't. And that's why like a Greta Van Fleet is a great example of a band. They just go out there and they do it. And mm-hmm. there's no, there's no smoke and mirrors. It's like they're doing it. So mm-hmm. in fact, uh, this is a few years ago, The Who was playing one of their songs and there was something wrong in the middle of the song, and Roger Daltrey stopped the song and said, we're going to do it again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you just don't see that. Yeah. And so I think people, at the at the risk of sounding old, mm-hmm. I think people, a lot of people growing up today really don't know what's real, and I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Right, and I feel like, so there's a huge difference between a band uh, cutting a record and performing that record live. Uh, Vampire Weekend was just here last weekend, and I got the chance to hear them do their sound check and also play. And... Um, you know, the lead singer's voice was so radically different than what you'd hear on a record, and you know he wasn't hitting every note perfectly. Right, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> so, mm-hmm. very cool. Uh, so now we're gonna play a little game. We're starting to do this now on each episode where we do this or that, and this is a music edition. So basically, the the thing is, I'll I'll name two bands. Okay. Band one or band two, and then you. Tell me, we'll go to Emma and then Tom, okay. which one you like better. Um, so I'll, I'll do a quick test run. Uh, I'll say guitar or piano. Oh, piano. Piano. Okay. So ready? Here we go. Bach or Beethoven? Beethoven. Beethoven. Elvis or Johnny Cash? Johnny Cash. Elvis. The Beatles or the Rolling Stones? The Beatles. The Beatles. Led Zeppelin or Pink Floyd? Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Guns N' Roses or Van Halen? I don't know enough about either one. <laughs> Van Halen. Oh, yeah. Van Halen. <laughs> I love that. Um, Nirvana or Pearl Jam? Um, 
Pearl Jam. Nirvana. Lady Gaga or Madonna? Um, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. And can I add something to this? Mm-hmm. So I didn't pay her any mind for the longest time <laughs> because every time I saw a picture of her, she was dressed like she was an alien or mm-hmm. some weird, and I, it's just not my thing. Mm-hmm. And I was flipping around, I think it was the Grammys one year, there's a woman, I had no idea it was her, and she was singing like a Tony Bennett song or some yep. old song, and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, is this a new artist? Like, mm-hmm. who, like somebody better sign her, and it was her, so. Yeah. I remember the first time I heard her sing like a really soulful song, I was amazed. Her voice yeah. is incredible. She's in, Yeah, she's yeah, incredible. Very, she got her start, um, actually, I don't know, I have to double check this, but she got her start like writing music for other people, like mm-hmm. she was kind of a ghost writer. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's, yeah she's, she's inc- got it. Incredibly yeah. talented, yeah. She's got it. Um, Britney Spears or Christina Aguilera? Britney. Aguilera. <laughs> Come on. Uh, NSYNC or Backstreet Boys? Oh, so hard. Backstreet Boys, though. No comment. <laughs> that's, that's a skip. Um, Prince or David Bowie? Prince. Bowie. Interesting. Taylor Swift or Katy Perry? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> Kanye West or Jay Z? Ooh, I am gonna say Jay Z just because I can rap numbers as encore his collab with Lincoln Park because I have that on my running running list. I don't really listen to either, but I'm gonna go with Conway because every time I see him interviewed, I just I have to watch. Yeah, it's He's just an interesting so, guy. to so see interesting. what happens. Yes. Ariana Grande or Billie Eilish? Billie Eilish. This is just singing. We're talking uh, just, about singing? Just total, in, in general. Overall songs, um, compositions. I think Grande has a great voice. She does. she does. Billie Eilish, I just think she's so cool. She has, I watched an interview, she has the synesthesia where she can like see music, music. and like that kind of thing. So I just think that's so cool. Yeah. And I haven't heard enough. Yeah. Yeah, I have to she's, listen to her a little bit more too. She's, she's kind of fresh. Okay. Yeah. Newer. Good, I feel better. Um, Post Malone or Justin Bieber? Justin Bieber. Pass. Unfortunately. (laughs) All right. That wraps it up for this or that. Um, And that's the end of our podcast. Thanks, Tom and Emma, for joining me. Anytime. Thanks so much for the invitation. We couldn't couldn't have done it without you. Or without you. We want to have you back sometime soon. So, yeah, thanks for joining us. Let us know what you want to hear next on Instagram. Send us a message. Um, If you like this episode, uh, make sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. It helps us out a ton. And we'll see you next week.